Hey guys, what's happening? So, just got back from Micro Center and about the components to build a new Raptorium uh, mining rig, RTM rig. So I got the uh, new AMD, what's it called? Uh, I'm not really a big fan of AMD stuff. Um, AMD Ryzen 9 59 50X 16 core, 32 thread. So yeah, it's definitely a lot better than my main rig, my main uh, computer that I edit the videos on. Um, but I'm actually a fan of Intel stuff. So when it comes to like business applications and the stuff I do for work, I prefer Intel. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been working in IT for 25 years. So I've actually had a lot of issues with AMD processors, processors over the years. So uh, if you're kind of new to IT or you've only been around it for 10 years, well, in the early 2000s, mid-90s, AMD did some weird stuff with the Athlon, you know, 2200 plus, plus, plus. It's supposed to be the same speed as Intel. So for many, many years, uh, Intel was the, the king of processors. Plus the x86, you know, uh, instruction set was developed by Intel. So I, I purely got this for uh, mining Raptorium. I'm not going to use it on my personal machine. Uh, like I said, when I'm ready to do that, I'm going to do Intel. Just all my programs are run better on Intel stuff. So I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of haters out there that are AMD fanboys, but um, that's just my experience of 25 years. But, okay, so what do I got? M2 drive. So Samsung M2 drive, got the AMD cooler, some uh, 8 gig of DDR RAM. So I'm going to be running Hive OS in this. And uh, all right, so yeah, one of the things is the uh, this thing actually didn't come with the CPU cooler. This thing was not cheap. This whole setup was like 1,100 bucks. So um, my theory behind that was I could buy two systems for the price of this one system. Uh, but I'd be getting the same amount of hash rate, though. But I'd be using a lot more power. So, you know, I could buy maybe even three systems for the cost of this thing, but I'd be getting the same hash rate, but I'd be using a lot more power because, you know, you're not just powering the processor. You're powering the RAM, the everything associated with the board, all the processes and all the chips, chipsets. So you're actually using more power. You have an extra power supply. So if you can't afford to get one system, you're better off just getting the most powerful system you can get. Uh, because you'll actually save more money and power. So, alright, um, let me show you the system we're going to replace it with. Alright, so this is currently my mining setup. That's my 3D printed stuff. 3D printed my pr 3D printed mining rig. All this keep all that stuff's 3D printed. So if you want all that stuff, it's on my Thingiverse page. Um, so this is the system it's going to be uh, replacing. So I got a 1200 watt Corsair power supply. Um, I got four RX 5700 XTs. And I'm not going to make a dedicated unit. Um, just because I want to actually save a little power and have less stuff going on. So I'm actually going to be Reptorium mining the, the CPU and then also mining the GPUs. So it might use, lose a little bit of hash rate on the CPU, but, you know, like I said, it's going to save me a lot of power uh, and space. So I'm going to take this out. This is currently a Core i5 uh, DDR4 RAM uh, M2 drive. So I got an M2 drive. I'm going to take this motherboard and put it in one of my other mining rigs and re replace the older motherboard on that. So, all right, let's go back to the test bench here. Yeah, so if you're new to the AMD stuff, so uh, these processors don't have the integrated graphics chip on it. So you'll need some sort of external video card to get this thing to fire up on the screen. Um, this thing is supposed to be pretty gnarly with the 32 uh, threads. But yeah, if it doesn't have a G on it, then it doesn't have graphics built into it. But I'm actually going to be running that, one of those RX 5700 XTs as a graphics. So that's not a big deal. Only 1x, PCI 1x, but... Alright, so next I gotta do is I gotta put HiveOS. I'm actually running HiveOS. Um, HiveOS on my uh, M2 drive. I do actually have an M2 adapter for that. I've made several videos about it. But, uh, so I just need to copy over the image to this thing. And instead of actually... I'm just gonna start from scratch. And just copy over the rig config. Um, that way I don't have anything transitioned from the old, uh, old system. Drivers. Etc. Alright, so here is the uh, motherboard. And I do actually like how they start integrating the I.O. plate into the actual motherboard. So it has a display port, HDMI, USB 3.0, oh, USB-C too. It looks like 3.1 I guess, the orange one. Um, I'll look at that, but I'm not going to use it, it's just a money motherboard. But eventually if this uh, Reptorium ever goes away, I might use this as my main computer motherboard, but like I said, I'm just not a fan of AMD stuff, for my work stuff. Um, 
I mean, I'm kind of mentally scarred from over the years having to deal with AMD issues. <laughs> that, God, oh wow, did I, take, did I take a four pin and a eight pin? I don't know if I had that connector or not. All right, that might be an issue. Um, for the CPU power, I don't know. I'm gonna look at the manual and see if that's even necessary. If I need, you can just do one eight pin or I have to do all six. I mean, it is a, I mean, it's a hundred, I think it's a 125 watt processor. So, mm, yeah, I'll have to look into that. But the memory I got is a uh, eight gig, but I'm gonna probably take my Crucial Ballistics off the other motherboard. So memory speed is also key here. Um, this is CL16 memory. If you can get it lower, the better. You know, but I mean, I didn't want to spend, you know, any more money than I had to. Um, so whatever RAM is faster, I'll probably end up using. All right, so look at the manual. And so you can do a four pin. If you had probably had like a low uh, power consumption CPU, you could just do the four pin. But uh, I'm gonna hook the eight pin up because I already have that on my Corsair power supply. But you can also, it's just basically adding more power to the rail, distributing the power. So if you had like an extreme processor, um, I mean, the more distribution of load you can do, the better. But I'm just going to use the uh, A-pin connector. All right, here is the 5950X. I'm not, I mean, I don't really, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of AMD. All right. Okay, get that in. I'm going to use some of my thermal paste. Well, i got to open up the AMD branded cooler here. Pretty big. Okay, cool. It came with thermal, thermal paste. I think it's like an RGB, one of those RGB coolers. Uh, maybe not. I can't do this with the one hand. All right, so from my test video cord, I'm just going to use this old Radon, Radeon with the uh, display port. Put that on PCI1, PCI1, and then on the RGB stuff, I um, connect it here, RGB and USB header because of the so I'm just going to fire this up, see if it works. Because um, I don't want to take down my other mining rig unless this thing actually totally works. Going to load the glass on there, make sure it works. Go in the BIOS, make sure there's any BIOS updates. And uh, here's my HDMI display port right here. Okay. We... Alright, so I'm going to go back in. Make sure my monitor's on and on digital. Alright, so I need a piece of metal and fire it, turn this on. Uh, do the same power. Okay, now we have power. Alright, got everything connected. Power supply on, power's on. Let's try this right here. Alright. Yeah, I don't know if my test monitor is not. It's gonna, I don't know if it's set to digital. It might be set to analog right now. Let's see if it comes up. I have other video cards too. Cool, got video. Came on by itself. 16 core, 5950X. Gonna hook up my uh, USB keyboard to it and uh, maybe get, go to the BIOS. I'm gonna go online, see if this has the uh, latest BIOS version on it. But uh, yeah, I can only do five video cards. If I ever get like a, I mean, it's hard to find those GPUs right now. They're insanely expensive. So, like the 5700 RX 5700 XTs, I was buying for $400 each originally now before I went crazy. But, uh, yeah, good luck trying to find one of those now. Um, nice, I'm going to do BIOS settings, USB keyboard. Alright, so the memory is only it's supposed to be 3400 megahertz. I thought the uh, DDR ran faster than that. I thought it was like 3200. What does it say? Uh, I don't know, I thought it was supposed to be like... Uh, I don't know, I thought it was supposed to be faster than that, so... All right, so I'm not gonna really mess with any of the overclocking settings yet, just because I want to get a baseline to see what this thing can do in its natural state, and make sure it's not overheating. And then once I make sure this thing works and it's going for about a week, then I'll start messing with the uh, overclock settings. I'll make another video about that. Just get the max hash rate out of this thing. It's the same thing with like a GPU. You know, you're mess. You're trying to get the best hash rate with the least amount of power. So, um, all right. So what was the uh, where was it? Uh, main. 
looking for the uh, BIOS version here. All right, so while this thing is flashing, uh, the BIOS is flashing, I'm going to install the uh, Hive OS on my, uh, this is an M2 adapter. So yeah, I'm going to be putting this on my computer, I'm going to flash uh, the image file via Belina Etcher on the SSD. 256 SSD, you don't need that much space. I think hardly takes any space up. The main thing is you can you can boot it from a USB drive, Hive OS, but it's not good. You're not supposed to. I mean, USB flash drives just can't handle the amount of reads and writes you're going to have to do for database logging, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know what's up with my uh, USB converter, but it would just it seemed like it got really hot, like it was shorting out. Like the pins weren't 100% right, I don't know. Um, didn't Never had that problem before, so I'll have to manually copy it over from a USB image. I'll show you that. I'm familiar with Linux, I've been building Linux-based web servers since the uh, late 90s. Alright, so I get that on there. Um, all right. And then there's like the little heat shield that comes over like that. Alright, so make sure you have a USB 3.0 uh, flash drive and a, and a USB 3.0 port. Definitely would make this thing a lot... Um, transfer over a lot faster. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, fire this up. I was thinking that button right there might be an extra power button. Sometimes I'll actually put a power button now on, on the mining boards, but that's not a mining board, it's a gaming board. Right, so I had to change my video card. For some reason it wouldn't boot. Um, at least I could get any it would it was booting, it just wasn't getting any screen. So I'm gonna do the F disk L. Alright, GP mismatch, da -da, we'll correct by rewrite. Alright, so I'm looking for that's the uh, USB drive, but it doesn't see the there we go. NVMe on 01, so that's where I gotta copy my device, disk device. Alright, so I need to, uh, I'm gonna do a command, I can't do it with one hand, so I'm gonna show you the command. And I copy over the uh, USB flash drive over to the uh, M2 drive. Right, so that's the command, so DD if equals device SDA, that's the USB drive right here. That is the uh, M2 drive. 10 megabit at a time, 800 count, status progress. Alright. There we go. So right now it should be copying flash drive to M2 drive. All right, looks like I've been copied over. 8.4 gigs. All right, so I'm gonna reboot this thing. Type in uh, reboot R B O O T, and then I'll have to remove the uh, USB drive. So once it actually the BIOS flashes, I'm just gonna pull this out. We want to boot the uh, M2 drive. All right, pull it out. Alright, now hopefully it should default to the uh, M2 drive. <clears throat> Alright, looking good, looking good. Alright, so now we're booting off the M2 drive. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot easier if you just connect it to this thing, but for some reason I could get this to work. Um, it was just getting hot, like I was shorting or something. Alright, so that's uh, this next step. I've already, hopefully this will have copied over, copied over the rig config, and I should have. Uh, one thing is, if you're going to do that, right, make sure you copy your rig config first to the USB drive, because that way it will copy it over to the actual M2 drive. You don't have to go back later and do a manual copy of the rig config. All right, let's do a ls. Uh, so I forgot where it was. So it's actually hive config. The folder is actually hive config. Uh, there it is, rig.config, and that should be my config for this miner. So now everything looks like it's fine. I take out the old motherboard. And put this in, and we'll start building a, uh, a CPU tune for Raptorium. All right, so got this thing powered on. Well, I don't have it powered on, but uh, got it connected here. Um, powers on. Let's see. What I might do is I might enable in the BIOS um, to have auto power on in case the power goes out. So I'll definitely do that. So auto power on in case the power goes out. Um, but I need to do is I need to get the PCI in the right order. So right now the primary video card, which is connected to the HDMI, is my primary monitor. It's all my 3D printed mining rig stuff. 3D printed mining switch. Uh, if you want all this stuff, all my 3D printed stuff, it's on my Thingiverse page. All right, so I need to get these in the right order. So I want to get the Red Devils over here, like in the order, like in Hive OS, and then the Sapphires on the very end, like uh, zero, one, two, three. All right, let's power this on. Let's see if we have any video. So 
I haven't fired up with this, this video card yet, so I don't really know if this is going to fire up or not. I do know this thing takes a while to boot up, but I am booting from a 1X PCI. It shouldn't make any difference, but... Alright, so I had to put that other card back in. So I'm actually making this video to... I mean, I could have made this video that said, hey, everything's great, you know, it worked perfectly the first shot. But that's so rarely ever the case, where you just put everything together and it works the first time. Especially with mining, because you're dealing with multiple GPUs and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, if I just would have been mining, uh, you know, just the, the CPU by itself, then it would have been done already. But, you know, trying to get the whole thing optimized. Alright, so i got to go to the BIOS. I'm going to do a few mods. Try to figure out why this thing's not booting from this video card. I forgot, there's a couple of settings you had to mess with some, somewhere in the, uh, in the advanced. I think it's... I'll figure it out. Well, once I get it to work, then I'll come back and I'll show you what I did. Alright, so here's the feature I was talking about, restore EC power. So in case this thing powers off, for whatever, it's like my power, power issue with my power and it shuts off, shuts back on, it will automatically start the miner again. So I'm going to make that... on. Alright, so I've never, actually never used an AC's motherboard, but it's the same pretty much for the Gigabyte and my other one. So you gotta enable this above 4G decoding. And as far as I remember, you need to go back and enable uh, PCI Gen 1. Let's go back to here. Where was that? Okay, uh, 1X mode, so it's auto. I'm actually gonna set this to uh, Gen 1. So all my different things here, I'm going to set to Gen 1 here. So the, so the four, I'm just, just the four PCI slots on the motherboard, or five, excuse me. Let's go here. And hopefully I will be able to boot from that little 1X riser. So empty drive, I'm going to keep it auto, because I'm going to want more lanes. Alright. Let's save this and reboot it. Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to remove this video card and I'm going to keep on messing with this. It has to work. <laughs> it's going to be something. I don't know. <laughs> DVI. Alright, so put it back up to the onboard video card, but I just want to make sure it works. Alright. F2. Actually, I'm going to show it off. Alright. I'm going to swap that card out put my other card back in. I mean, it does make it a little bit more trouble, difficult to troubleshoot when the CPU doesn't actually have an onboard video card. And that definitely makes it easier to troubleshoot, so that's why I have to go back to a known video card. <laughs> go back and forth until I can get this thing to boot up. Mm. Alright, looking good. All right, make sure it goes F2. I want to make sure I go in the BIOS before I do a full boot. Maybe. There we go. Ah, jelly boot in the hive. Yeah. All right, well. All right, so I know it's booting in the hive now. So what I need to do is get the rest of the video cards on here. And I need to make sure they're in the right order. I boot back in the hive. So it was 4G decoding and enabling PCI Gen 1 to get these things to boot. But now what I do is I boot into Hive and I want to see. So now I've had the AC restore mode, it just automatically boots up. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll look and I'll see what, what order these are. So like when I do the overclocks, I like it having a specific order. Right, so I've got the GPUs in the order I want to show up in Hive here. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's taken me a couple hours at this point, so a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of issues I have to deal with. So now I can go back into uh, on my computer and we'll start doing the CPU tune and getting Hive OS programmed. Alright, so sorry for the background noise. Alright, so let's get this going. Got the cord sort of like in order I want. I'll apply the supply sheet to this. So the first time I boot this up, it's going to have to do uh, tune the CPU. So I gotta go back. Here's my flight sheet. I want to do a combination of G minor, or next not G minor. I want to do a Team Red minor for the AMD cards and running RTM 
Zelcor Wallet, Flock Pool. Alright, now apply this. Go back, log into it. Okay. User 1 is default. And, okay, do a minor. So that should be. Okay, loading my GPUs. And let's do a Control AA. And we'll switch over to, okay, huge page. All right, so it's going to take 152 minutes to tune this thing, and we'll see what kind of hash rate we get. So uh, once I get this thing kind of going and, and going for a couple days or a week, then I'll start messing with the overclock. But all right, I'll come back once this is done uh, doing the auto tune. All right, so this thing has been mining uh, overnight, and so far so good. I haven't actually seen any crashes. I mean, I'd see reboots right here if I was having issues, but. Um, it does fluctuate the actual hash rate a lot, so it goes from anywhere from the upper uh, threes, uh, you know, 3,800 uh, kilohash, or no, yeah, kilohash, and then uh, to about the like uh, lower fives, like 5,200 kilohash. So I see it fluctuate quite a bit. Um, so you can see the 32 threads here and what they're actually hashing currently. Um, but I actually haven't really messed, I mean, I'm not going to mess with like, overclock settings yet. Um, because I mean, I like to undervolt this thing just a little bit to make it run cooler and l less power consumption. Maybe overclock it just a little bit, but um, I kind of need rig stability because I'm also GPU money on this thing too. So, um, but let me show you this real fast. This is the uh, what I'm doing here. So I'm hashing. So I'm like I said, I'm doing my whoop, doing my GPUs too. Oh, I don't know what's going on here, but. I'm also doing my uh, GPUs, and I'm actually mining flock pool, but let me show you that real fast. So I'm currently mining uh, seven rigs, and this is actually the rig that I, the, the motherboard that I took out of that, that, that this rig, or this rig, is now going to go into this rig. So I'm going to retire this motherboard. It's a uh, mining motherboard. I can't remember the exact model number of it, but I'm running a, a Celeron. You can see it's only two cores, and it's 37 hash, 57 hash, but so it's pretty horrible. Um, so I'm going to retire that motherboard, and... Place that, and here is where this is the new. So right now it shows 33.72, but I said it fluctuates a lot. And I mean, I guess I made 20. I don't know. I don't know. It probably made 30 or 40 overnight. Um, but uh, all right, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully this thing will pay it off pretty soon. I, I'm not sure. You know, I'm pretty new to this coin, so I don't know what exactly how much you profit. Um, but for me, it's more of like a long-term thing. It's not really. I don't expect to break even on this thing unless the price skyrockets. Um, but if not, I probably will take about a year to, to pay it off because it was, wasn't cheap. It was 1100 bucks. So I might get one more mining rig. I might, on this other mining rig here, this uh, 4 GP miner, my NVIDIA mining rig, I might or might not upgrade that motherboard to another, um, you know, not as like, extreme as the other one, but maybe like a, a different one that where I can at least step it up to like a, maybe like a thousand or two thousand. Uh, hash, hash a second, but all right, cool. Uh, having fun, man. This is fun stuff. Um, all right, yeah. Like I said, it, it never, it never it goes perfectly as planned. I mean, I mean, I've been working IT for a long time, and it's you just kind of troubleshoot them. <laughs> you saw all the stuff I had to go through. So, um, all right, cool. Hopefully, this video helps somebody. Um, so we'll see what happens with the Raptorium, but I right, guess yeah, cool, awesome. Thank <laughs> you.